Let's look at an example with 2D motion from a net force now involving friction. So where we get an actual deceleration from the friction force. A skier is on a gradual slope inclined at 4.7 degrees to the horizontal. She gives herself a push and starts down the slope with an initial speed of 2.7 meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between her skis and the snow is 0.11, how far will she slide before coming to rest? So you'll notice that the coefficient here is unitless. It's a coefficient of proportionality between the kinetic friction and the normal force. Those are both in newtons. So it's unitless. I've got an incline here of 4.7 degrees, very gentle incline, gentle slope. And so that same angle applies here of 4.7 degrees. I've got the force of gravity acting straight down, a y component here, fgy, it's in the negative direction and it's related to the cos of theta. And then I've got an x component of my gravity and it's in the negative x direction for the way that I've, I've defined it here. My positive axis, it's going along the negative axis. And there are different ways to define your axes. I tend to always apply the positive and negatives or the positives this way, unless I'm doing um, pulleys and then I'll ap apply them appropriate there. Next, I've got a normal force that's gonna balance out that FGY. So I can draw it somewhat to scale based on that FGY that I've drawn. And I've then got a kinetic friction. How big should this be? I don't have to draw it to scale, but if it was the exact same as the X component of my gravity, I'd be balanced out and not moving anywhere. Or if I'd already gotten moving, then I'd be moving at a constant velocity. But they've tipped me off that there is some deceleration here. So this must be a rather small vector. So this is my kinetic force. It's impeding the motion, so it's acting against it in that direction. And this is going to be proportional to my kinetic coefficient and my normal force. So we've got our forces identified. Now let's look at the sum of those forces in the y direction. What have I got? I've got Fn. It's a positive Fn. And I've got a negative Fg cos theta. And that will give me any acceleration in the y direction but I know there's no acceleration in the y direction, or at least I'm not given any information about one, so I can presume there's no acceleration. She's not leaving the ground. And that tells me then that I'm balancing the normal force and that component, the y component of the gravity, force of gravity. Next, we look at the x components. There, I've got the kinetic friction. It's positive and I've got a negative component from a gravitational force, and that will give me any acceleration in the x direction. The kinetic force is just that coefficient of friction times the normal force, less my mg sine theta, which was negative, and then again, my acceleration. And from up above then, I can substitute in for the normal force and I can simplify here. First, noticing that mass can be cancelled from all of those terms. So I don't need to know the mass of the skier. That's true for any of these acceleration problems. And so finally, I get this expression for the acceleration along the x-axis. So let's take a moment to look at the kinematics then, now that I have an expression for my acceleration. I've got a skier that is moving along in this direction, and so I've got a V-naught that is going to be equal to a negative 2.7 meters per second because it's moving in the negative x direction for the way I've defined it. And it says before coming to rest. So we want to know something about the final 
distance when the final velocity is going to be equal to zero. Right? So we're trying to find out what our delta x will be. So we've got v naught, we've got v, we've got a delta x, and we've got an expression for an acceleration where we have coefficient of friction, acceleration due to gravity, and our theta. And so that suggests this kinematic equation that relates my acceleration, my velocities, and my displacement. And I'm just going to solve for my delta x. I've got a zero final velocity, an initial velocity of 2.7 meters per second. That's all squared. Two times my acceleration. And my acceleration here is my coefficient, kinetic coefficient, gravity, cos of 4.7 degrees minus gravity times sine of 4.7 degrees. And so I have, as a final answer, a delta x of negative 14 meters. What does this mean? Well, if I started here at what I might call x equal to 0, I went to a point here of x equal to a negative 14. So my delta x equal to x minus x naught is going to be equal to a negative 14 meters. It's negative because I'm ending up further down the negative x-axis than where, where I started. And the force of kinetic friction brought this, the skier to rest. And so if you noticed on when I worked out the acceleration, this comes out to be a positive value. Why was it a positive value when I was moving in the negative direction? Well, my velocity was negative because I was moving in that direction. So the net force was in this direction because the kinetic friction was actually greater than this force or this component of the gravity. And so it was winning and it was slowing me down. If the gravitational force was larger, then I would have been speeding up despite the friction. I would have been accelerating down the hill. But instead, I was slowing down. And so this component, or this force here, the kinetic friction, was greater than the acceleration due to gravity, was greater than the force of gravity, and my net force was then in this direction. 